So I've been working on this fun scene that you can see here. It's based on my stylized isometric rooms course. You can check out the link in the description for that. But I've learned a few things along the way whilst making these stylized objects, which can really speed things up and make them far more adaptable. So let's take a look at how to build this bookcase together as an example. So let's create the same bookcase in a new scene. So I'll take the default cube, scale in the Y, bring that in, scale in the X, and just so we've got a bookcase type object here, I'll just bring it above the floor as well so it's easy to see. And I can go into edit mode and, and delete the face at the front. So we've got the sort of skeleton of a bookcase here. I can also add some shells just by doing some loop cuts. So control R to do a loop cut, move my mouse over my object to set the position and then use the wheel of my mouse to create an extra couple. Double left click to set that position and set them in place. And then I can go in and select each edge loop with alt left click and F to fill. So I'm filling in these faces. So I have a really basic kind of skeletal bookcase. So how can I add some thickness to this? Well, I can use the solidify modifier. So go across to the modifiers, add modifier, and type in solid. And you can see it's under generate because we're generating new topology. So I click on that and it's very small thickness for such a large bookcase. It's only one centimeter. So I'll turn this up. So we've got a bit more thickness there and you can see the thickness being applied there. Now, one thing to point out when using modifiers, it's quite important that you set your scale. So if I go back to object mode, press N on my keyboard and go to my scale, you can see that it's not set to one. And this modifier happens before the scaling happens. So even though I can tick on something like even thickness, which does seem to make a difference, it's still thicker at the top than it is the sides because our scale is happening after the modifier. So I need to set this back to one. So control A is to apply the scale. And you can find that under the object menu as well there, apply scale. Now you can see though that there's some anomalies here where the shelves are, we sort of go in a little bit more. There's a bit more thickness across here. That's because if I hide my modifier with this button here, the shelving are kind of inside faces. They're not quite how we should be building topology and objects. So if I go into edit mode and select my shelves, so interface mode, select those three shelves and P to separate by selection. I've now got a separate object there. So I'll go back into object mode, bring back my solidify modifier for the outside of the bookcase and then select the shelves and bring it back for those. Now we've got a bit of overlapping geometry here. If I select the outside, I can change the offset so it goes outwards and we've got quite a nice looking bookcase there. So quite easy with the solidify modifier. What about if we want a little bit of smoothness and kind of instead of these sharp edges? Well, we can add a bevel modifier to this. So add modifier, type in bevel. Looks a bit chunky at the moment. I'll just minimize the solidify. And then we've got the bevel just here. So in the amount, we're at 10 centimeters at the moment. So we might want to turn that down to something like 0.2. So two centimeters. Looks a bit better, maybe up the segments. And then we can right click and shade smooth. And we've got a smooth outline for our bookcase. In terms of the shading, we can harden normals. That should harden off the edges there. Harden normals kind of flattens things out basically. Makes the normals more direct. And that's not looking too bad. I could up the segments if I want a little bit more detail, or I think I'll just bring down the amount to one. So it's a little bit sharper. And there we've got a nice bevel and I can do the same to the shelves. I can actually select the shelves, select the outside of the bookcase last and control L and copy modifiers. Notice the shelves move up. That's actually just the solidify modifier going the other way, but that seems to be working quite well. What about the stylization aspect? How can I make it all twisted and warped? Well, that's where we can use what's called a lattice modifier. To use that, we have to set up the lattice first. So you have to press Shift A to add, go down to your lattice, and you need to make this cover the outside of your bookcase. So I'll bring that up, scale it out slightly, scale in the Z, and just make sure it covers my bookcase. So scale in the Y as well. So it's nicely surrounding my bookcase. Then I can select the bookcase, I'll minimize the bevel modifier now and add modifier and then lattice. It's asking me what lattice I want to use. So we click on the picker and choose the lattice that we've got here. And now any changes I make to my lattice. So if I select that, go into edit mode, I can move these around and distort the shape. That's a little bit limiting at the moment because we've got only a small amount of topology on the lattice. So if I go to my lattice modifier, I can actually up the resolution probably mainly in the W axis, but you can make this more detailed if you like. I think that's probably what I need. You don't need to add loads. It just means you've got more to kind of move around. So I think that's quite nice. And then I can select these perhaps. Proportional edit is useful for this. So I'll turn that on and let's rotate in the Z, rotate this way, scale them up. And we've got 
an interesting stylized bookcase there. The only thing is our shelves aren't being affected. Well, I can just go into object mode, select the shelves, select my bookcase last and control L to copy the modifiers once again. That will copy the lattice modifier. And I can have loads of fun stretching out this lattice in different ways. Maybe select the bottom and scale those in. I'll increase my circle of influence with the proportional edit. And we've got this interesting stylized type of bookcase that you can see here. The great thing about using modifiers is that I can easily go in to my modifiers, make sure that my bookcase is selected and I can change things around like the bevel amount. So I could make it very soft. I could change the thickness as well and make it very thick. And I just need to make sure that they're copied across. So copy the modifiers to the shelves as well. And you can see it gives a different look. The one caveat is that if you want to make any minor changes, you have to apply your modifiers. I can't go in and let's say add some sort of loop cut across here and bevel one of my vertices that I like to do to create notches. It just doesn't work because of all the modifiers that are on here. So if you want to make any stylized changes like notches and cracks or beams and things like that, it's a little bit more tricky and you'll probably have to apply all your modifiers. Now, if I go back to my scene here, you can see I've done the same with the chair. So this is a lattice modifier affecting the chair. The chair is actually separate objects, but they all share the lattice modifier for this lattice. So I can go in and modify this and make it look all distorted and weird if I want to. And there's a fun looking stylized chair. And you can do this with all sorts of objects and make them really quirky and stylized like this and create some fun stylized scenes like you can see here. So the main idea here is to try and speed up your workflow with using modifiers and stacking them on top of each other. And the key being the lattice modifier for changing and distorting the shape, making it fun and stylized. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.